We've got Mullen, Super Paul Mullen. I just don't think you understand. You don't understand. You just don't understand, do you? You don't understand. We've got Mullen, Super Paul Mullen. I just don't think you understand. Boom, boom. He plays in red and white. He's fucking dynamite. We've got Super Paul Mullen. Yes. Welcome back to uh, Welsh B Sports and the Wrexham blog. And I just want to talk about the weekend's thrashing of Morecambe by Wrexham 6-0 at the racecourse. What a response. What a win. What a performance. Before I carry on, please do me a favour. Please come on board and subscribe to the channel. If you can do that, thank you very much indeed. I will be very, 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 very grateful. So, uh, cheers for that if you can subscribe. Yes. Wrexham 6, Morecambe 0. A thrashing by the town. A response to the defeat against Accrington. It's what we wanted. It's what we needed. We've shown people you fuck with us. This is what happens. A truly remarkable display of football. It wasn't just sexy football. It was obscene. It was filth. It was red or Dutch. I mean, absolutely fantastic from start to finish. They never let up. A hat-trick for Paul Mullin. He's just something else, isn't he? He's a special, special player. He was put on this earth to make us ejaculate. And he never fails, does he? He's got to be Rexman's best player of the last 30 years. I'm sure Tim Edwards from Feel Us in Devotion will, uh, will agree with me. Tim is the main man when it comes to Wrexham. He's the main man. His opinion is what counts. And I'm sure Tim will agree with me that Paul Mullin is the best Wrexham player of the last 30 years. A gifted, gifted talent. A genuine sensation. A superstar. A true superstar. And another brilliant all-round performance by him. Because he set up the first goal, didn't he? He set up the first goal, the own goal with Cannon challenging fair play to Andy Cannon, making the, the defender uncomfortable. So it's a great all-round performance by Mullin. It's been a great week for him. And he's looking sharp again. He's looking back to his best. He just scores goals and he's just an all-round complete footballer. He does everything. And long may continue because he's just special, as I keep saying. The words just don't... I'm powerful enough for that. You can't find the words for him. He just delivers week in, week out. What a player. But what a performance, like I said, from Wrexham. You know, the back page of the leader this week. Reds are ruthless. Ruthless. A ruthless display. And it was. It was aggressive. It was ambitious. Just an all-round from start to finish, as I said, the early start, two goals in seven minutes. They're having some great starts now at the race course. They're dominating games at the race course. The race course is becoming a fortress again. And that early start, two goals in seven minutes. And they just went from there. I thought Morecambe were poor overall. I expected a bit more from Morecambe. Top 10 team at the start of the day. They just didn't do anything. They, they, they tried to play football. They just didn't create anything. I think one chance in the first half. Which a Cronkog saved with his leg. It was a header from a corner. A Cronkog saved with his legs. They tried to play. They opened up. And we exploited that. Wrexham exploited that with some fast football. Some movement. Some energy. Getting forward in numbers. Just relentless wasn't it? That goal by Mendy. Uh, to make it 3-0 was a beauty. He just beat two players. It opened up for him. They said, go on, Mendy. Try your luck. It's yours. And he said, I will. I bloody will. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much indeed. Very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. Cracking finish by Mendy to put us 3-0 up. Dead and buried then, wasn't it? At half time, it was over. They weren't going to let that slip. They were in too much control. 
And fair play to them. They got more goals in the second half. I felt they would. They were hungry. They had a point to prove. They were on their game. This is Wrexham at their best. We talk about Mullin being the best Wrexham player for the last 30 years. This has got to be the best Wrexham team in history. The best Wrexham squad. They're winners. It's all working out, isn't it? It's all working out. Let's have a look at the league table. They're now up to second. Five points behind Stockport, who lost. Can you believe it? Stockport lost. Mansfield lost. What? What? What are you saying? Mansfield lost as well? No. Yes, Mansfield lost. Stockport lost. Notts County lost. It was a big week for Exum and they took advantage. The rivals crumbled under the heat. And we roast the occasion. That was a good weekend for Wrexham. It was Wrexham's weekend. There's a feel-good factor in the town. Everybody's buzzing about it. Online, in the street, I speak to people Sunday. Even people that didn't go, even people which is a casual interest. When Wrexham do something special, and it's always special at the moment, isn't it? It's a special time for the town. It's a feel-good factor. The town is buzzing. It's buzzing. But as I said, Rex up to second now, back up to second. Mansfield on th are in third on 35 points, Rex on 36. A point ahead of Rex, a point ahead of Mansfield. Crew a fourth, 35. Notts County slipped down to six, 33 points. So Rex are well up there. They are not only challenging for promotion, they're still challenging for the title. Just get this consistency going. And hopefully Stockport can drop more points because Stockport are the team to beat, but we're right behind them and we're challenging for the title. As I said, Wrexham are winning. It's it's all working out, isn't it? Not just investment and fame and glory and exposure through documentaries and uh, media. Wrexham are winning. As I said, the best Wrexham squad. They've got a lot to do to achieve the success of Teams of the 70s and 80s, teams that did well in Europe, teams that did well in the FA Cup, teams that won Division 3. The Dennis Smith team was a, success, a successful club. Parkey's probably the most successful manager since Dennis Smith. They're winning, they're challenging for trophies, they're reaching finals, they're challenging. This is Wrexham's third title challenge in three seasons because they're clearly challenging for the title. And the players they have, again, they've got internationals like McLean, Fletcher. Championship players. It's a League One squad at worst. And again, the best Wrexham squad in history. The work that, like I've said this before, the work that's gone in to recruit these players and put them together. McLean, Fletcher, Cannon, Lee, Evans, Palmer, Mullin, Toza, Hayden, Will Boyle. You can go on and on and on and on. There's no Duff player now in this squad. There's no Duff player. Ford. I mean, you just go on, you know. Barnett. You just go on. Just go on. Again, lots of these players have come down the divisions. So, like I said, the strongest squad in Redstone's history. And it's winning. It's all working out, isn't it? And on Saturday was just a tremendous performance. I thought that first 10 minutes especially, the first 10 minutes was fantastic football. They were so aggressive, got forward in numbers. They always had four or five players forward. The box was littered with Rex and players' options, people trying to get involved. It was just exceptional that first 10 minutes especially. Aggressive, expansive football, moving around, switching the play, linking up. I thought Andy Cannon controlled that first half especially. That first half belonged to Andy Cannon. It was his pitch. It was his game. And he took some stick at times. I think he went in and committed a foul, didn't he? He got stuck in as he does. He's a Rottweiler. When he's on form, he gets stuck in there. And he made a, a strong challenge. And he was a target for uh, Morecambe. They did him in quite a few times, I seem to remember. But he just dominated that game. Just dominated. He wanted the ball so often. He was always involved in the moves. 
He was always involved in some way. A fantastic, fantastic half from Cannon. And as I said, he did well for the first goal. His, the pressure he put on the defender contributed to that own goal. And a, blo a bloody lovely good ball from uh, Mullin. George Evans is impressing me still. I wasn't sold on him to begin with. I've said this before, a big name, lots to prove, and I didn't think he delivered. You know, his reputation preceded him. He didn't live up to the hype. He's starting to now I'm seeing more of him, and he controlled the game at times on Saturday in a different way to Cannon. A bit more composed, a bit smoother, picking up the ball, bringing it out from the defence, picking his passes, driving forward, nice and smooth. Nice and composed, good vision. So he did very well on Saturday. I was impressed with him again. He is growing on me, George Evans, after a rough start from my perspective. O'Connor didn't put a foot wrong again in that position where he's just made his own, looking so impressive. And Mendy, when he came on, playing probably on his wrong side, as we know, Shane Ford went off injured, not having much luck, is he? But Mendy came on, scored a cracker. And... Uh, Impressed me as well, but it was an all-round team performance, fighting to the end. James Jones's third goal, six goal, six goal. There were six, remember, six, six goals. That last goal for X and the football, the one-touch football, the link-up play. It was just absolutely sublime, sublime. And they've got to keep this up now. It's Harrogate tonight. Well, I'll watch it on the stream. I'll pay my 10 quid for it because it's going to be worth it. This is a poten potential banana skin. This could be Ar Ar this, this could be Hackrington again. These are the type of games where Wrexham slip up. Dominance are home now. They can go away to good teams and be dominant. They play better against the better teams on the better pitches. This might be a banana skin. Harrogate lost to the weekend. To uh, Crawley. They're down there. They're down there. At, where are they? They're 15th. 23 points. This could be a banana skin. They've got to dominate the game. They've not got to be dragged down to Harrogate's level. These type of stadiums. These type of pitches now. This type of team can unsettle Wrexham. And they've got to rise above it. They've got to dominate. They've got to control the ball. Dictate the pace, fast football, get stuck in. Maybe we need you know, we need Palmer perhaps to start. Make sure he's there to rough up the, rough, ruffle the feathers, perhaps, but don't get dragged down into the mud. You know, if 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 Harrogate wants to make it dysfunctional and gritty, try and play football. That's where that's Rexman's best asset, their technical ability, their pace, their movement. Get Lee on the ball, driving forward, get it out to the wings, get forward in numbers and, you know, just stay solid at the back. Very impressive with the defence on Saturday, really rock solid and switched on, more of the same. But Harrogate, it's a big game this, because they, they do tend to do silly things in these type of games. So it's going to be interesting, if they can pull off the win, they're flying, because... Wrexham are well up there. They're challenging for the title. It's game on. Automatic promotion is very, very realistic. Very, very realistic. Just put another run together and it's bish, bash and bosh. Cheers, guys. And I will see you on the next video.